Hello there. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about how we calculate the probability amplitude coefficients corresponding to the basis states in an infinite potential well if we're given a particular wave function corresponding to a particle living in the well. If you like what I do and you'd like to support it, well then Patreon is the place to do that. So let's begin. In order that you get the most out of this video, you should know something about the wave functions of a particle living in, infinite, in an infinite potential well. In this case, we're looking at one which extends from x is equal to zero to x is equal to l. And if we solve the time independent Schrodinger equation, we get the general solution here, which corresponds to the wave functions of an infinite potential well. Now I've plotted the square of the n is equal to one and n is equal to three wave functions in front of you, just for illustrative purposes. Now, by mathematical definition, the wave functions of our infinite potential well are orthonormal, and that's given by this expression here, but they're also complete, which is described here. And this means that we can take a linear combination of the basis states to describe an arbitrary wave function for a particle living in an infinite potential well. Now, what happens if we actually don't know we don't know this. We didn't construct the wave function of a particle living in, infinite, in an infinite potential well, but rather we we were given it and we wanted to calculate the particular coefficients. Now, first of all, these coefficients are known as probability amplitudes. In order to calculate them, we would exploit the orthonormality integral and do that using what's known as Fourier's trick, where we take this integral, which is known as the inner product of each of the basis states and the wave function of our particle in the infinite potential well. And each time we compute this integral, we will get the corresponding probability amplitude. So let's say that we find a particle in an infinite potential well, and we know its wave function somehow. We know that the wave function is given by psi sub zero of x. And this is simply a linear combination of the basis wave functions, which are given as psi sub e sub n. So in this case, for example, I'm going to take five times the n is equal to one wave function. I'm going to take 21 times the n is equal to two wave function and so on. Now, the purpose of this section really is to decompose a given function, in this case, psi sub zero, into its basis states. That said, showing how we actually construct one in the first place is also useful. So I'm going to ask that you bear with me for a moment. What we're going to do is show how we, how we would construct a particular wave function that is a linear combination of basis states. Well, what we do is we'd take the linear combination as we've done here, and we would have this normalization constant A. So what I'm gonna do is normalize A. Now, first of all, I'd like to show you what psi sub zero looks like. If you plot psi sub zero, the unnormalized psi sub zero, we get this particular waveform. Normalizing A is very straightforward. We simply take what's known as the inner product now, I'm not interested really in this case in the integral, so I use Mathematica to calculate the normalization constant. And a plus minus is given by plus minus one over two square root 241. And for convenience, I'm simply gonna take the a plus normalization constant, and that is our normalized wave function for a particle living, or a particular particle living in an infinite potential well. And I'm gonna call the normalized psi sub zero psi sub one which is given at the bottom center of your screen. Plotting psi sub one clearly has the same form as psi sub zero. However, it's scaled and that's all the normalization constant did. But we're here trying to calculate the C sub n's, the probability coefficients, if we're given a wave function for a particle living in an infinite potential well, the C sub n's. So let's say for some reason we are given psi sub one and we want to know all of the c sub n's. The thing here is it, it's pretty much a moot point for the particular example I've given you because I've done it as a linear combination of the basis states, hence the probability amplitudes should be pretty obvious. For example, if we took a look at the n is equal to one wave function, the probability amplitude for that particular basis state is gonna be the product of the, the five in this case and one over two, 241. If you want to know the probability amplitude for the, let's say, n is equal to 11 basis state, it is going to be the product of one and one over two, 241. So please bear with me because I'm trying to make sure we come from a position of knowledge when I generalize it in a moment. 
formally, if we wanted to calculate all of the c sub n's, we would have to use Freya's trick, which is given by the integral on the top right of your screen. Now, generally speaking, you'd like to look for a nice looking, simple expression for your c sub n's, one expression. So for example, let's take the wave function psi sub three, which is given in the center of your screen. Now I've just pulled this out of the sky. I'm going to tell you that if you actually compute Fourier's trick for this particular wave function, and this describes a particle living in an infinite potential well, you will get this really neat looking expression for the probability amplitudes, for all of them, because it's a function of n. The thing is, that sort of neat function rarely actually occurs. Hence, usually you have to calculate each of the integrals corresponding to each of the c sub n's separately. So, Though you may feel I'm going around in circles, and I ask you once again to bear with me, formally the c sub n's are given by this integral here. We note that we're not actually integrating from negative to positive infinity because our, L, our well only extends from zero to L. And if we insert the basis states or the general expression for the basis states and our general normalized wave function, we get this fairly cumbersome looking integral on the bottom of your screen. Once again, if you're really following it, you'll realize that the actual result of each of these will be simply the product of the, the, the power series expansion coefficient and the normalization constant. And this is because of the orthonormality property. So for example, when n is equal to one, this will be, this will be psi sub e sub one, which is exactly what we have here, which means all of these will be or will be, um, won't be orthonormal and they will integrate to zero and simply we'll be left with this. And when you, can do, uh, when you actually uh, calculate this particular integral, you'll be left with five times one over two root 241, and so on. I used Mathematica to calculate the coefficients explicitly, and it gives us this list of numbers where I'm taking n and the probability coefficient or the probability amplitude. Notice, of course, the square of the c sub n's is one, which it has to be because the probability must sum to one. The next thing I'm going to do is plot a bar chart of the square of the c sub n's to look at the probability of measuring the particular particle in a particular basis state. So having computed all of the c sub n's, we plot them in a bar chart and it looks like this. And if you look closely, it means that the n is equal to two basis state corresponds to a probability of approximately 45%. So what does this mean? This means that if you had a lot of identically prepared particles and that they're all in the psi sub one wave function and that you measure their energy using the Hamiltonian or the energy eigenvalue equation, approximately 45 or 46 of, uh, 46% of the time, psi sub one would collapse into the n is equal to two or the psi sub e sub two wave function. And the way we know this is because the energy that we'd be calculating would correspond to n is equal to two. And this really should make sense because in the power series expansion, I took a coefficient of 21 on the n is equal to two basis state. And now I think we're coming from a very strong position to discuss a more general example, though it might appear we've gone around in circles a few times already. What if I took a finite power series expansion of psi sub one of x and I took it as a x to the n, I took it in that form this should basically produce almost the same probability amplitudes. And the reason it's almost is because I'm taking a finite power series. And what I'm interested here is that this representation of psi sub one would be a completely different function. It wouldn't be a linear combination of the basis states of the, the signs, it would be looking completely different. So if we're able to calculate the same probability amplitudes, then it shows that our Fourier's trick and so on definitely works. So I used Mathematica to calculate the functional form of what I'm calling psi sub two, which is the, the uh, x to the n power series representation of psi sub one. And that's given in the center of your screen. And what happens when we plot it? Well, we get a fairly decent agreement with our psi sub one. 
the red uh, the red function corresponds to our x to the n power series representation of psi sub 1 and the blue is actually psi sub 1 in the linear combination of the basis states of the infinite potential well and I just want to say that we can use the exact same procedure as we we, we discussed earlier on but this time we're going to substitute psi sub 2 instead of psi sub 1 and calculate the probability amplitude coefficients so we're going to take the inner product of each of the wave function basis states with the actual given psi sub 2, the power series in x to the n. And we're going to calculate each of the c sub n's and make a list of n and c sub n. Once again, I'm going to plot the square of the c sub n's, which is related to the probability of finding the, uh, the, the particular particle in that basis state or that energy level. I won't bore you with the details, but I've plotted here at the C sub n's and I've just done a plot so they can join 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 the actual the values as opposed to doing it in a bar chart. Now red corresponds to our x to the n power series representation and you can see we've excellent agreement at the lower n values and we have fairly good agreement at the upper n values but the thing is most of the wave function uh, is contributed from the lower basis states. So this means we're going to have a fairly good uh, representation of our psi sub 1 using the x to the n representation. And all of that is just to say that given an arbitrary wave function of any functional form that happens to describe a particle living in an infinite potential well, if you take the inner product or you take the Fourier trick with each of the basis states, you will calculate the probability amplitudes corresponding to all of the basis states. And like I said, your wave function doesn't have to be a linear combination of your basis states. It can be anything. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it has cleared things up for you and that you have uh, you can accept that perhaps I was moving around in circles at times. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.